So I'm going to be working on uh, refinishing up my gas tank. It was pulled from my car. I just threw some undercoating on it really quickly when I put it on the car to try and protect it. And when I drove it, uh, didn't prep it, didn't really do anything. As you can see, it hasn't held up great. So uh, my plan now is just to hit it with this uh, flap disc. Get all the undercoating kind of off, even though it should come basically right off. Uh, and that's, I think that's 60 grit. So that'll be all nice and sanded. The bottom half here, I'm gonna do undercoating. And then whenever I put it back inside the trunk, the top half, I will be using the paint that I use for everything else, that roll bar and chassis paint. So just gonna get grinding and uh, then paint in here shortly. Okay, so here is the gas tank after I grinded it all of it down, all the undercoating. Uh, I believe that was actually 60 grit. I think I said 80 earlier. So, should be all nice and scuffed up to where I can go ahead and throw some paint on there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Alright, so I went ahead and used this Raptor truck bed coating hey Luke. <laughs> on the uh, bottom side of the gas tank and it turned out really good. I like the little bit of texture. <clears throat> texture it has. The uh, spray nozzle on that can has got to be the best spray no nozzle I've used. Uh, it came out of the can super just even, nice and clean. The coverage is really good. Um, really really happy with it there is a couple if you get the lighting just for right you might be able to see it a couple of spots where the coloration might be slightly different and that's just because i was closer or further away from the uh tank so probably just a little more a little less or a little bit more texture if i was further back probably a little less texture so really happy with that that was uh just from the auto parts store and uh, i can't wait to see how it holds up but man that was very uh enjoyable and easy win i am going to go ahead and get this thrown in the trunk of the mustang i need both hands for that so i will get back with you guys after i get it in so this one was an easy one gas tanks in i got all new hardware courtesy of maryland mustang dan over there he uh go ahead he went ahead and uh hooked me up with this whenever i was buying some other stuff he said hey do you have hardware and i said oh no i didn't think about it so Dan is always the man to go to, uh, always hooking it up and always uh, reminding you of little things that you do forget, which then saves you a trip. Um, so thanks to Dan for that. And uh, yeah, that is the gas tank. So what I did was I just uh, threw it on in. As you guys saw earlier, I uh, did that Raptor liner uh, on the bottom side here and it's looking really good. These screws are the screws that hold in the gas tank. Uh, they work right now. Uh, I might go to like screws and bolts, maybe some grade eight or something. Uh, they, they are stainless, so they should hold and not rust or anything. So I haven't decided yet, uh, what I'm going to do. Um, but it's all coming together. I still need to run the fuel line, which I have some flex fuel line and AN fittings and everything, but I don't know if I'm going to end up using the AN fittings just because, um, I'm gonna add my Edelbrock in inline fuel pump, like probably to the frame rail somewhere over here, and um, a fuel filter. So I don't have AN fittings that will line up and match with those. Uh, I need to look for my carb. So on my carburetor, I have an Edelbrock Performer carb, which is a 600 CFM. Um, and I don't have a way to run the fuel line into it with an AN fitting. So right now it's just kind of sitting there. I contacted Edelbrock and they actually sent me a piece 
that connects to the carburetor, runs down, and comes out the front um, to an AN line, a 6 AN, which is what I have, what I currently have. And then this is the line, the uh, fuel line. I just kind of have it bundled up here because I knew that I was going to end up relocating this guy to the rear of the vehicle. So that's going to be next. Uh, the AN fittings I had were black with red, so I really would like to get them on the vehicle, but um, if it's not feasible, then it's not feasible. So, but that's going to wrap this one up for the gas tank. I just need to put the filler neck on and uh, get everything buttoned up, but that's it. Uh, really excited that the car is coming together uh, as much as it is. Also very, very nervous just because I'm not a welder and uh, <laughs> I have welded all this. So everything seems to be pretty strong. I've been doing a ton of shake test and cool test. Um, you know, just this corner right there moves the entire car. That's into the taillight panel and everything. So feeling pretty good about that. And then um, overall, I've been trying to jack stuff up on it and really try to stress it a little bit. So uh, yeah. That's going to do it for this video of the guest tank. This is a short one. I'm sure some people will appreciate that. Let me know if you guys have any questions about it. But, I mean, it was literally as easy as taking out the hardware, painting it, putting it back in. Um, I'm hoping that my fuel sending unit is still nice and tight. But I have had a leak on that since day one, since I've replaced it. Like, I think I've done it four times now with different gaskets and all the little tricks and methods of putting grease on there, holding gasket, make sure it doesn't get pinched. I've done the Vaseline, I've done automotive grease, I've done everything and uh, sometimes it leaks, other times it doesn't. So I don't know. Uh, when I get it all back together this time around, knowing that none of this is supposed to be coming apart again, I will uh, really sit down and address it. So. All right, well thanks guys. We'll keep on uh, going with this and we'll see where we end up.